Have you ever walked away from a conversation feeling unimportant, undermined, or even a little dumb? What if that subtle discomfort was actually a sign, a clue uncovering hidden intellectual manipulation? If you find yourself questioning your intelligence, mentally drained, or replaying conversations to try to make sense out of what was said, you might be dealing with an intellectual narcissist. I've spent the last 20 years researching the deep connection between self-worth and narcissistic relationships. As a coach, author, and someone who's lived these challenges, I know how difficult these interactions can be. Intellectual narcissists can be subtle and difficult to pinpoint in everyday interactions, but if you know what you're looking for, the signs become clear right away. In this video, I'll share five clues that'll help you spot an intellectual narcissist in conversation, personal stories from my own experience to help you recognize these patterns, and actionable strategies to empower you in any discussion, making sure that you're always one step ahead. Have you ever been stuck in a conversation where the other other person seemed intent on proving just how smart they are? This is the first clue to spotting an intellectual narcissist in conversation intellectual dominance. When you're talking to an intellectual narcissist, you'll notice a recurring pattern, their relentless drive to showcase their intellect, turning the dialogue into a one-sided show of their achievements and knowledge. Instead of saying something like, I'd like a more challenging project, they might say, it's so hard to find somebody who can actually keep up with me. The people on my team are so incompetent. There's this clear message that others aren't mentally keeping up, coupled with this need to state their superiority. And this can be tricky when you're an empathetic person like you and me because we tend to give others the benefit of the doubt. We might assume the intellectual narcissist simply needs a challenge rather than recognizing their calculated attempt to belittle and to control. In my personal and professional life, I've learned to be very wary of anyone who goes out of their way to put down my intelligence or who needs to be the smartest person in the room. These are the red flags that I look for. The person who gives endless reasons why they know more than everyone else, or the person who dismissively says, I can't believe you don't know that, or the person who seems to take joy in making others feel stupid or foolish. This doesn't necessarily always mean that they're an intellectual narcissist, but it's a sign for me to take a step back and proceed with caution. When you find yourself in a conversation where the person person seems to be dominating with their knowledge or expertise, try the intellectual balance check. Intellectual narcissists can't tolerate balanced idea exchanges, and this tool helps test that. Instead of directly challenging their dominance, weave in your own insights or ask a thoughtful question like, that's an interesting point, what do you think about dot dot dot? You're testing their ability to engage in a two-way intellectual exchange. If they dismiss your input or quickly steer the conversation back to their own expertise, it's a red flag. Have you ever been in a conversation where the other person seemed intent on correcting everything you said, making you feel like your opinions didn't matter? This is our second clue to spotting an intellectual narcissist in conversation, dismissing your knowledge. You're going to notice a recurring pattern belittling your input and correcting you in a condescending manner to assert their intellectual superiority. What's even more frustrating is that they aren't even necessarily that smart. Their motive is to undermine your confidence to maintain dominance and control. They might say something like, you should already know this, making a point to embarrass or shame you. They won't explain because that would help you. Instead, they want to be the ultimate authority, maintaining their position above you. They're stingy with any new information that they have, wanting you to know that they have it and you don't. Now, when you're an empathetic person, you might miss this because you're comfortable with other people knowing more than you. So you might not see this power play for what it is. For me, this dismissiveness is the quickest thing to help me stay out of their trap. For example, when I was new to town, I needed to find a new doctor and I asked my neighbor who constantly talked about her extensive medical knowledge, if she had anyone she could recommend. She dismissed my question with a condescending refused to help, and acted as if my question was beneath her and that I should already know the answer. This doesn't necessarily mean she's an intellectual narcissist, but I now see the possible red flags. When you find yourself in a conversation where the person's dismissing your input, try the respectful inquiry check. For example, if you offer an opinion and someone has a condescending response like, that's a naive way to look at it, Instead of directly confronting their dismissiveness, ask a clarifying question. You could say something like, why do you think so? Or can you explain what you mean by that? This tests their willingness to engage respectfully and to share knowledge without belittling you. If they offer a thoughtful response, that's a great sign. If they respond with disdain or dismiss your question, 
that's a red flag, so be careful. If you'd like a copy of the tools I share, sign up below and you'll get a new three-minute empowerment plan every week. Have you ever been stuck in a conversation where the other person seemed to be speaking in unnecessarily complex or technical terms, making it really hard to follow along? This is our third clue to spotting an intellectual narcissist in conversation, using word salad to confuse or impress. One of the hallmarks of true intelligence is being able to explain things as simply as possible. And this is the opposite of what you'll see with an intellectual narcissist. Their goal is to use confusing language to manipulate you into feeling dumb and to make themselves appear superior. They use word salad to hide their inadequacies. And this can be confusing when you're an empathetic person because you're focused on trying to make sense of what they're saying, so you don't see the tactic they're using to manipulate you to dominate the conversation. In my personal experience, the red flag is what happens inside me. If I start to feel confused or incompetent in a conversation, I've learned to do a quick check-in to pay close attention to the overall message. Are they trying to dominate? Are they trying to belittle? Do I need to ask a clarifying question? This helps me keep my feet on the ground and prevents me from being manipulated or gaslit. When you find yourself in a conversation where the other person is using overly complex language or word salad, try the clarity check test. First, check to see if they're trying to dominate. Look for signs like interrupting frequently or dismissing your input or steering the conversation back to their expertise. Next, consider if they're trying to belittle. Notice if they're using a condescending tone, making you feel foolish for asking questions or implying that you should already know the information. Finally, check to see if they're just struggling to explain things or maybe you just need more more information. To check for this, you can ask questions like, can you explain that in simpler terms? Or I'm not quite following, can you break it down for me? By asking this, you do two things. First, you put yourself in a humble position. And if you're dealing with a reasonable person who's just having a hard time making sense, this will make it easier to communicate with each other. Second, by questioning the tactic, you're going to make yourself a threat if the person is trying to manipulate you. So keep an eye on their response. If they become defensive or dismissive or refuse to simplify, this is a red flag. Have you ever been in a conversation where someone kept mentioning their degree or name dropping where they went to school? This is our fourth clue to spotting an intellectual narcissist, their need for recognition and admiration of their intellect. You'll hear habitual mention of academic achievements or anything cerebral that makes them appear superior as if they are in the know and you're just a lowly peon who couldn't possibly understand them. They might say things like, when I was in law school, even if they never pass the bar to mask their insecurities and to maintain a facade of intelligence. And this can be tricky for empathetic people because you know what it feels like to be insecure and to want to prove your worth to someone. So you might think that this is what they're doing instead of recognizing the deliberate manipulation intended to make you feel small. I once had a coworker who constantly mentioned that she graduated from Harvard. Her job had nothing to do with her degree, but she would name drop Harvard several times a day with clients, colleagues, everyone. The first few times it sounded impressive, but after hearing this about a hundred times, <laughs> her compulsion to insert Harvard into every conversation became transparently bizarre. This doesn't necessarily mean she's an intellectual narcissist. Sometimes super insecure people do this to convince themselves and others of their worth, but it was a reason for me to be careful and to watch for more red flags. When you find yourself in a conversation with someone who keeps name dropping their degree or their academic achievements, try the validation check. First, pay attention to how often they bring up their credentials or their intellectual accolades. Notice if they steer the conversation back to their achievements repeatedly, even when it's not relevant. Pay attention to your feelings. Does it feel like they're trying to make you feel inferior or that they're trying to get you to validate their intelligence constantly? To test these intentions, you can gently steer the conversation away from their achievements and see how they react. For example, when they say something like, when I was in law school, you can just respond with something like, that's interesting, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this issue. And if they become defensive or keep bringing the conversation back to the accomplishment, it's a red flag. Have you ever been in a conversation where the other person seemed indifferent or cruel when you were struggling to understand something? This is our fifth clue for spotting an intellectual narcissist in conversation, their tendency to use knowledge as a weapon. When you're having trouble understanding or trying to learn something new, an intellectual narcissist will often show no patience or compassion. When you're an empathetic person, this is easy to miss, especially if you're prone to blaming yourself for any inadequacies. I once saw an example 
example of this at a game night. This guy tried to turn the entire night into this superior intelligence contest. He'd explain the rules with so many unnecessary details that the rest of us were just like, overwhelmed and confused. And instead of clarifying, he seemed to get a sadistic sense of joy from our confusion. His explanations were not meant to help us understand or to play better, but to make us feel less than, as if we weren't smart enough to play. Of course, I don't have enough information to confirm that he's an intellectual narcissist, but the way he acted rang enough alarm bells for me to quickly excuse myself. When you find yourself in a conversation where the other person seems indifferent or even cruel when you struggle to understand something, try the compassion check. First, pay attention to their reaction if you ask for clarification. Do they respond with patience and a willingness to help, or do they become dismissive and condescending? Next, observe how they handle your confusion. Do they offer an explanation in a kind and understanding way, or do they use your struggle to assert their superiority and to make you feel like you're not good enough? To test their empathy, you could say something like, I'm having a hard time understanding this. Could you simplify it or explain it more? And if they respond with kindness and patience, they're likely not using their knowledge as a weapon. However, if they react with impatience, sarcasm, or mockery, it's a red flag and time to step back. Mastering the compassion check is essential for anyone, especially those of us who often project empathy where there is none. Now that you know what a narcissist says, you need to know what they do. So click this video next to learn the body language of a narcissist so you understand the way they position themselves in any room and how they assert physical dominance. This will help you spot the narcissist early to make sure you're always one step ahead.